Australia currently that may come as a surprise to several people, as it isn't an issue that's brought to the attention of the wider public very often. This is the increasing problem of feral deer in Australia, which are imposing several ecological threats and are considered an invasive species. Yeah, that's right. The wild population causes significant damage that includes a loss of diversity and the abundance of plant species. Uh, they also compete with our natives like the kangaroo and the wallaby. As well as this, there's a chance they could possibly spread diseases amongst uh, other animals. Introduced in the 19th century, they have been present here for more than 150 years and were brought here originally by European settlers from Europe and Asia as game animals. Initially, these settlers introduced 18 different species of deer here in Australia. However, most of these species failed to thrive and survive in a harsh range of environments. Out of all 18 species, only six of these species have managed to survive to the current day. The six that are still standing have established herds in a range of Australian habitats. These species include the fallow deer, red deer, sambar deer, rooster deer, chattel deer and the hog deer. These species are scattered majorly along the eastern side of Australia. Fallow deer are scattered along the southeastern coast. Red deer are found in southeastern Queensland and southern Victoria. Rooster deer in the Sydney area, New South Wales, Melville Island, Prince of Wales Island and Queensland. Sambar deer in Gippsland, Victoria, Australian Capital Territory, Coburg Peninsula and the Northern Territory. Chattel deer in Maryvale Creek and Queensland and the hog deer in far southern Victoria. There are various reasons as to why the other 12 species of deer did not succeed. The main reason for this is that only a very few number of animals were released, possibly as few as three, one male and two females. If one of those few specimens were to fail to find a suitable source of food or shelter, then the introduction would have failed. This inability for the species to adapt and survive indicates a poor match made between the designated environment and the species. This was a major cause of most failures. Aside from those failed species of deer, the ones that have adapted perfectly to the environment are causing some major issues. It is generally found that where deer density is high, diversity and abundance of plant species is low. Although there are many claims of damage caused by the deer, there is a serious lack of scientific studies that demonstrate actual damage caused by the deer. Our wonderful news crew have investigated more and will be giving us all an insight greater into this issue. The deer population in Australia appears to be expanding. There has been legislation that has provided them protection. Uh, there is approximately 200,000 individual deer in Australia in around 218 populations. Uh, in Queensland alone, the issue is also quite large, with around about 30,000 deer in about 16 populations. Deer are native to every continent except for Australia, but have been introduced here for grazing purposes. Where wild populations established and grew, deer have also been farmed in Australia since 1803. Throughout this time, the number of domestic farmed deer have escaped, where they, where they have then joined the wild population, which future increased their numbers. Also, the diversity and abundance of the Australian plants can be reduced as an impact of the deer consuming and trampling the seedlings and saplings. The deer also damage mature trees as the deer rub their antlers on the trees, trunks and branches in order to polish their antlers. The deer population is an issue because an increasing wild population poses some problems like environmental issues, spread of disease and can be hazardous to motorists. Due to deers being hooved animals, they have the potential to harbour and spread disease that can affect domestic livestock such as foot and mouth disease, which could have a huge impact on the Australian agriculture. Deer in New Zealand are carriers of bovine tuberculosis, so the disease risk is real in other countries. There is also a potential to impact human health. Deer can transmit disease to humans such as leptospirosis and cryptosporidium. Both can potentially be spread to humans by deer. There are also problems that an expanding deer population will cause, especially in urban areas. In these areas, the deers can cause car accidents. The deer can cause a serious traffic hazard. Hitting a deer can cause a great amount of damage and be very dangerous for the occupants of a vehicle. Another impact that the increasing deer population can cause is through their grazing. The grazing habits of the deer can spread weeds as well as this. When they graze, they clear out areas where weeds can become more dominant again. There's also a problem with a greater herd can compact soil, which leads to a greater problem with erosion. Wow, oh dear, that was interesting.
<laughs> now over to Lauren to hear more about the future of deer in Australia. Thanks guys, and now to discuss the issue a little further. As we've just heard from Joel, deer as an, as an invasive species has created some alarming issues. And as for the future of these animals, it is seen that new management strategies are encouraged. So with governmental agencies formally recognising the many threats associated with the species. Now the management of this species has traditionally been to reduce the population density with the main form of population regulation being human hunters. However, this approach is seen to be very ineffective as it does not reduce the populations to the degree at which ecological impacts are minimised. And whilst it is recognised that it will not be effective as a standalone technique, little research has been conducted to assess the effectiveness and social acceptability of other methods. Feral deer in Australia are generally seen as a pest, but despite this, states with the largest quantity of this species, such as Victoria, New South Wales and Tasmania, all give full or partial protection, leaving the legislation and management of this introduced species highly inconsistent. With this, the control of deer is often left to the consideration of expenses in labour and equipment. This means the government determines whether the damage is sufficient to justify the costs of control. The tourism industry is also largely involved in the management of deer due to invested interest including income and profit that the species produces. So with the rise in distribution and abundance of deer, improved management strategies are needed and should include a better knowledge of the species' biology, fertility, population dynamics, density, movement and nature of the damage they are causing. There will also need to be a clear outcome with the use of appropriate control techniques and a monitoring process to ensure that it is achieving the primary objectives. However, you can bet that without new integrated management approaches, the issue is likely to remain unresolved and the impacts increase noticeably. Now back to the studio. Well, that was very interesting. Hopefully those measures for the future are successful. Hmm. Now over to our scientist in the field, Cody, for some final thoughts. Now we all know deer species were introduced to Australia due to the hunting and gaming practices. Further releases occurred due to the deer farm crises. Now these animals established wild populations and while some species vanished, other species thrived and increased in numbers and expanded throughout the continent. The increase in feral deer populations throughout Australia has devastating effects on the native Australian flora and fauna. Australian plant species are decreasing due to deer's grazing and browsing habits, along with herds trampling flora such as seedlings and saplings. Crops are also damaged due to these deer habits and soil erosion is occurring due to the hard hooves of the animals. Australian native grazing fauna such as kangaroos, wallabies, emus, etc. have to compete with deer for a food source. Therefore, Australian native fauna numbers in areas where deer populate are decreasing. Due to feral deer herds increasing in size, it is no surprise that they are moving into more urbanised areas. This is another problem, however, as they are a threat to people driving, especially at dusk to dawn. Deer are currently controlled by hunters who reduce the population of feral deer in an area, but this approach is ineffective as ecological impacts are not reduced. Despite feral deer becoming such a large issue in Australia, states such as Victoria, New South Wales and Tasmania offer protection for their feral deer population. Some more research and scientific studies must be done on the impacts of feral deer alone as most studies measure the impacts of deer together with other grazing animals in Australia as a whole. We can then prioritise and begin planning other strategies to control the Australian feral deer populations. There are current control methods for the feral deer population in Australia, but these are clearly not working as deer populations continue to rise. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Yes, thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget to tune in next week when we explore the secret life of snails.
Um, okay. Improved strategy <laughs> without new manage integrated management. The issue is. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Cool, got it. <laughs> we started filming. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay.